Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to present this uh, on behalf of Rio Jordan. He's our PhD student, and he led this work. And also Lan Bing Ye, who was a master's student, so they, they led this work. But it's um, um, what we call uh, StressVis, designing a stress analytics dashboard for teachers. And first of all, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country for the Massachusetts tribe in, in the land where we are um, at the moment. And Rio was connecting from the um, Indone Indonesia, I think, from Japanese people. And um, the talk is about stress. That's in, that's in the title. No? Where, where does it come from? Um, and we know that the stress is, uh, uh, is the result of uh, the sympathetic nervous system reacting to some stimuli. And, and we can capture information about stress um, if we use, use sensors, because uh, sometimes we, well, a reaction of the body uh, to the stress is that the heart rate changes, there's a breathing change as well, muscle tightness, we all have felt these body temperature changes, blood pressure. Um, and so why is this relevant to education? Um, we know already that um, it's documented that students suffer from stress and however it's very difficult from the teacher's perspective to see a stress. Um, so, uh, one potential way, and actually there are pedagogies that utilize stress as a pedagogical mechanism, um, especially in situations such as healthcare, law enforcement, firefighting, and emergent response training, where the whole purpose of the educational task is to learn from stress, is to uh, uh, provide the, the students, the learners, with conditions that mimic what they're going to find later on in the real world. So they have the opportunity to develop strategies to understand stress, cope with it, and, and then still perform. Because if they don't do that in training, then they're going to struggle later on when stress gets into the, the actual task in the real world. And the, the pedagogical signature for some of these situations is that these um, simulations of, of the situations that evolve stress are followed by reflective debriefs where the students to reflect on how they felt and how to make the most of, of that situation and their standard. Um, and, all these reflections depend just on ephemeral evidence, on observations from the, the teacher. The teacher cannot go and see what was the blood pressure of the student, for example, or how, how was actually feeling, uh, how the students were feeling during the activity. And sometimes as well, the students may, ha may find hard to articulate their personal experiences to a stress. So this is where there is a potential justification to use uh, the learning analytics in, in these kind of situations where we can provide some enhanced evidence to provoke this reflection on the stress. Okay. Um, so these are the, the main um, goals of the, of, of the research, which is uh, trying to understand the, the levels to, to what extent we can uh, provide some evidence on stress. And, and also understand uh, to what extent the users, in this case teachers, can trust on, on this evidence provided to them. Um, these are research gaps we have identified, and, and these are the ones that are, we are actually um, converting and addressing through research questions. So the first research question is about how uh, making the sessions about stress levels can contribute to sense-making or about a stress-inducing learning scenario. Uh, the second one is about the teacher's trust and if that can be influenced by the models of stress compared to uh, another physiological cue of stress, which in, in our case we chose uh, looking at cortisol measures. And the third one is about the envisaged adoption of any tool that we can start developing for these particular scenarios. So we conducted a relatively small 
study, but it was conducted in the wild, completely under the uh, conditions in which teachers usually uh, lead this kind of stress-inducing scenarios. We had 20 nursing students and four simulations. I'm going to explain what about the simulations. We obtained data from Empathica E4 wristbands um, that the students were wearing, and we also collected cortisol before and after the simulation. This was the scenario, as you can see. On the top right, there was a, an angry patient yelling at students, and the students were nursing students that were immersed in this scenario. They are coming to, to apply an injection to, the, to this gentleman. Well, this gentleman is just yelling, and, and, and it was quite realistic. This is a professional actor that was uh, mimicking the kind of conditions that the students are going to find later on when they have to attend uh, patients that are really angry. And we have different roles of uh, students, two register, two nurses, and ones and two observers. And we plot these empathicas and all these roles, all these students, to understand to what extent they were getting aroused by, by this actor. Um, of course, this is a description of how the, the learning immersion happened. This was what the teachers had designed. The learning design was completely in the wild. Uh, there was a briefing at the beginning, and then there were five phases uh, of this uh, scenario. And it was a script for much people. The actor had this script, and he had to elevate the voice and the aggression. So the teachers had already a hypothesis about the intended aggressions and the kind of stress that um, coming from from moderate to high until extreme when, when there was some kind of violent reaction. So uh, it was a very interesting opportunity for uh, using analytics and this kind of multimodal emerging analytics. I'm going to invite you to, to read the paper about, for all the details because we only have 10 minutes. Um, but what we did was pretty much creating a, using a model from, that was available training a model from a data set that was really available uh, in public. And based on that model, we detected levels of stress in each of these phases. Some of the, uh, the prototype uh, visualizations that we use as a device to address our research questions. And we can see in each row, we have, in this case, it's for simulations. Level of, for, for one role, like the main nurse that was receiving the aggression, how that role, um, what was the levels of stress of, of that student in each of the simulations, in each of the teams. So if you can see, um, in the students reacted differently to, to this uh, stress provoker. And so most of them were stressed during the situation, except like the one at the end, they had different labels like stress, not stress, and amuse, which that was a label that was in, a, in the data set that we used for training our model. Um, so we conducted this study by uh, inviting teachers to look at the visualizations, and then we asked them questions, think aloud protocol, we asked or some open-ended questions, and we analyzed the transcript from, this, uh, from these interviews uh, qualitatively. For the first IQ, we were trying to understand <clears throat> uh, to what extent these visualizations can promote sense-making and stress-inducing learning scenario. And we used some vignette analysis to, to illustrate how this was happening. This is just one, I'm going to I'm conscious about the time due to the technical issues. This was one example in which the teacher looked at one, one group, and as you can see, when uh, roles and the students were reacting differently, even the observers in this case were more stressed than the, the, one, the other students that were receiving the aggression, which was, was something interesting and started to spark some, some thoughts from the teachers. So the teachers in general, they said that this kind of modeling was believable, and they could see and correlate their expectations based on, on what they would see. Um, and explaining in terms of the learning task, uh, for example, uh, this, the, how the observers, even the, they want to rescue or help someone, but they cannot do it, and that's why they were becoming stressed. That was their explanation. 
we're going to, to see other examples. And the title of the paper is that that student is a lion timer, uh, tamer. Students that were not stressed at all, and, and that was one of the very interesting quotes from the teacher. Um, and um, so we, we realized in, in our that uh, this kind of evidence can provoke a reflection and sense making from students. However, the RQ2 is about trustworthiness, and that's the topic of the conference, right? And in this one, we compare our model with cortisol levels, pre and post the simulation. And on the side of the visualization, we use uh, some color to indicate that the, if the cortisol levels were up, going up or down. Um, uh, intuitive hypothesis is that if the students were stressed, the cortisol goes up. The intuition is not what the literature says. Um, we, don't find, we didn't find perfect correlation because also when we look at the literature, stress can be um, it, it's very susceptible to uh, uh, changes that are individual and even uh, drinking a, a cup of coffee in the day is going to change it. So, but this helps us to uh, elicit some questions about trustworthiness and it just were not as when once they saw the cortisol data, once they saw something additional to the model, if what they were making sense of was always correct. And that's what we also want to provoke, questioning these models, especially about things that are happening under the skin. About the adoption, now that the teachers were very positive at the beginning about sense making and then looking at cortisol levels and, and, and there's questioning algorithms. Um, and they had lots of usage uses. And I'm going to stop here um, to also get, potentially give room to, to questions. Um, but in general, the takeaway message for us is we're still far from uh, accurately measuring what happens under the skin of students. It can be risky to just deploy things there. Uh, in, in the scenarios, um, and that's why the, even though we deployed the, the sensors to measure data, the visualizations need to be carefully designed, uh, taking into account the levels of trustworthiness and potential risk of, of showing um, under the skin data.